Are your trees and plants looking weak, unhealthy, being attacked by pests? And you just don't know what to do about it. If only you could talk to me. Well, it turns out that trees and plants are actually really good communicators. Just with other trees, plants and root networks. So in order for us to communicate with our plants and trees, we're going to need a helping hand. And you might remember in our last video, we gave you our top five tips for monitoring and managing the health of your plants and trees. And tip number three was to use a Brix refractometer. This easy to use, inexpensive device can give you valuable information on the state of your plants and trees allowing you to correct deficiencies, reduce susceptibility to pests, and increase your yields. And in this video, we're going to show you how. So stick around, your garden will thank you for it. Our seven acre farm is located on the Cassowary Coast in the wet tropics of far north Queensland, Australia, where the rainforest meets the reef. We grow commercial crops of tropical fruit, jackfruit and canister, and also use our spare land to fulfill our dream of becoming more self-sufficient. In our weekly videos, we share with you our slice of paradise and our life on the farm. So just to recap, BRICS values are measurements of dissolved solids within a liquid sample through refraction. And as we explained in our previous video, it's important that you first calibrate your refractometer using distilled water so that when you look through the telescope end, the reading is exactly zero. Then when you want to use it, you want to squeeze a few drops of the liquid that you wish to test on the plate, close the lid, Give it a tap just to remove any air bubbles and distribute the liquid evenly and then hold it up in a good light source preferably the sun look back through the telescope end and you should be able to get your reading now we do recommend that you get yourself a garlic press <laughs> to take your samples um, it will help, especially when you're doing leaf samples, it will help you to get the sap or juice out of the leaves if you use a garlic crusher. So this refractometer, we, we paid $21 for this, but it can go up to 30, 40, 50. They're all the same. But the interesting thing is Angela wouldn't let me use her garlic press. So I had to go out and buy my own, apparently. The garlic press prices started at $38 and went up to 90 So the garlic press cost me more than what that did. <laughs> when you're taking your leaf sample, always take it from the same place. What I mean is you take the first fully formed leaf. So wherever you take it from, always take the first fully formed leaf. That will give you a more consistent reading throughout the orchard or throughout your garden. Now in terms of the refractometer, I'll be the first to admit that I always thought of it in terms of just measuring the sugars in the fruit, or how sweet the fruit is, and it wasn't until an agronomist actually taught me through the other ways that you can use it in terms of using it for testing the leaves which then in turn tells you what's happening within reason in your tree and the health of your tree. And it does it by, as Angela said, measuring the sap sugar. Now, before we get stuck into the different tests that you can perform using this device, we need to get a little nerdy and scientific and go through the basics of how trees get their nutrients. So trees and plants will use energy from the sun, water from the roots, and carbon dioxide from the air. 
to produce sugars through a process known as photosynthesis. This process relies on chloroplasts, which are found within the plant cells, and they contain chlorophyll, which is a green pigment, and which is why our plants and trees are green. So basically, these chloroplasts are like little food factories within the cells of your trees, producing sugar or fuel for the tree itself. So think of yourself as the factory supervisor. Now importantly, trees have a symbiotic relationship with the microorganisms in the soil, such as fungi. So the tree will actually share some of the sugars that it produces with these microorganisms, such as fungi, in exchange for other essential minerals, such as nitrogen and phosphorus. Trees can even share their resources with other trees through this complex fungal network. Okay, so we know that the plant makes sugars and that it shares these sugars with its root system. Well, this transfer of glucose from the plants to the roots usually happens in the early evening. Well, think of this in terms of a lift system. And the lift operator is boron. So if you have a boron deficiency, then your lift operator didn't show up for work, which means that the sugars get trapped inside the cells, they can't get into the lift, they can't get down to the roots, and then the roots won't exchange nutrients with you. So using your refractometer, you can actually test if you have a boron deficiency by doing some tests early in the morning and late in the afternoon or early evening. There should be a difference in those samples and the test that you do early in the morning should actually be lower than the test that you perform in the late afternoon or early evening. And this is because the plant is making its sugars during the day and then sending them down to the roots overnight. So you might be asking yourself, what is the ideal BRICS level that we should be aiming for? Well, as we've just explained, BRICS levels can fluctuate during the day and depending on what's happening with the weather, etc. But as a general rule of thumb, you should be aiming for a BRICS level of at least 12 when measuring your leaves. Some experts do suggest that it's better to aim a little bit higher than that and aim for a BRICS level of 14 because that way you're giving yourself a nice buffer for if the BRICS levels do drop. Now this is really important in terms of susceptibility of your plants and trees to pests because the lower the BRICS level, the unhealthier and more nutrient deficient the tree. And you might be interested to know that pests are actually attracted to weak and unhealthy trees. And this is because they can digest that plant matter more easily than a healthy tree. Oh, do you want to be in, do you? So we've established the importance of the BRICS level. One of the key aspects in BRICS levels is the amount of nitrate nitrogen that's used. Now, low BRICS levels can often be linked to high nitrate nitrogen use and the high levels within the plant. Nitrate nitrogen is taken up only with water and so the more nitrate nitrogen is in there, the more dilution effect there's been and it's really hard to maintain nutrient levels with a high nitrate nitrogen density. Now, if you're going, going to use ammonia nitrate, because that's highly soluble, I would suggest that that's used during dry periods so that it isn't leached away with high rainfall. Another thing that you can look at if your BRICS levels are low is your calcium levels. And calcium is often referred to as the trucker of all nutrients. It, it's what helps make nutrients mobile. 
So if your Brix levels are low, it could well be calcium levels are involved. A good indicator of nutrient levels, nutrient density, is when you're looking through the refractometer, the line where blue meets the white, if it's a sharp, crisp line, that's an indicator of poor nutrient levels. If it's a blurred line, then that's a good sign that you have good nutrient levels. So that, that line is a, a good indicator of both nutrient levels and calcium levels. Now, if you're looking at calcium as an amendment, the three calciums you have is your straightforward line, which is calcium and can raise your pH quite significantly. You have dolomite, which is a combination of calcium and magnesium. That will raise your pH levels, but not as drastically. If you're close to your pH levels, you can use dolomite because that will move it up in smaller increments. And the other one is gypsum. Gypsum is cal calcium sulfate, and your trees also need sulfur. So that's another good amendment, and the gypsum won't actually affect your pH. So if your pH is okay, but you want need more calcium, then gypsum's the route to go. Another test that you can do using your refractometer is to take a sample from the top of your tree and another sample from the bottom of your tree. Those two readings should be the same. And if they're not, and there's a discrepancy, that may indicate a potassium deficiency. Now, whenever you're doing these tests and whatever you think the deficiency might be, always experiment using your refractometer. So in this case, if you did notice a discrepancy and you did an amendment by applying potassium, then in two or three days time, do those readings again so that you can see, did your amendment actually work? Hello. Hello. Okay. So now we just want to briefly talk about the effects that weather can have on your BRICS levels. And you may notice once you start doing these samples that if you have prolonged periods without sunshine or prolonged periods of cloudy days, that your BRICS levels may drop. And this makes sense because the trees and the plants need the energy from the sun to photosynthesize. So when there's a lack of sunlight, naturally, you're going to probably get a drop in BRICS levels. But one thing that's really important with regards to this is the amount of humus that you have around your plants and under your trees. So if you have really good levels of humus, then that can actually hold your BRICS level for longer than if you didn't. So your drop in BRICS level will be a lot more gradual than sudden. And that's one of the reasons why we spend the time chipping all of our prunings and fallen palm fronds and such like to heavily mulch our rows. It helps, as we've said before, with uh, protecting the soil from erosion or drying out. But since talking with the uh, agronomist, that's when we started to really chip down the prunings because he explained about the building up of the soil and the humus and what's the other nutrient that's there, the sunshine one. Oh, so the humus um, will naturally contain fulvic acid. That's it. And fulvic acid is commonly referred to as the second sun. So that's why it is important to have good humus around your plants because the fulvic acid that's contained in there is what will hold your tree's nutrition for longer in periods where there's a lack of sunshine. Which actually, the apu tree. Yes. Never thought about that until just. 
so this abu tree i mean we have cleared some weed trees this was well inside of the boundary completely surrounded by various trees it had no fertilizer there was no bug sprays there was nothing at all done to it the only thing that this tree has had in the last 30 years or maybe 40 years the only thing it's had is all the leaf matter and all the branches that have fallen to the ground and broken down and if you look at the foliage on that tree nothing wrong with it whatsoever there's little or no sign that i can see of any insect damage on the leaves every single fruit that we picked from this tree not a single one had been stung the fruit was probably twice the size of anything that you would normally expect to see the only thing that this tree has ever lived on in at least 30 years is leaf matter and organic matter so what we want to do now is compare the sugars in the leaves from the seedlings that we've got propagated here to some seedlings that have sprouted out in the paddock. It's going to be harder to get juice out of the leaves. Might have to crush a couple of three times just to try and work the juice. Get all the air out. Eight. So I would say that that's reasonably low. Yeah. Okay, this is just some seedlings that have um, germinated down here. I think it's from when we were um, harvesting seeds and maybe there was a few seeds left in the fruit and we threw the carcass down here. It'll be interesting to see the difference between com the yeah. seedlings that we've germinated up there and the ones that are wildly germinated in all of this. Wildly. Wildly. <laughs> germinated in all of this mulch and organic matter yeah rather than potty mix well the thing is with the potty mix i suspect because it's classed as premium and it's got enough fertilizer six months worth of fertilizer do they cram it full of nitrogen in which case that yes you'll get growth but it's not necessarily quality growth because too much nitrogen will block your your other uh, elements that you need. Got to work these leaves a little bit before you get any movement and, and moisture. Oh, that's some good juice. Nine and a half. So it is better. Mm nine and a half and eight with our seedlings yeah. up on the veranda if it's around 12 you'll know that all the different parts of the fertilizer are working the way through the calciums and everything else the magnesiums the potassiums if you've got too much nitrogen and bear in mind we've just had what 10 days worth of heavy rain nitrogen is soluble and so will take up easier in the really wet ground. So I'm going to collect some leaves now. Okay, okay. okay. Ken, so so that's better. Um, and considering how much rain and cloud cover we've had. Yeah. They're not going to be working as well without the sunlight. Mm, because uh, of the photosynthesis. Yeah. So we hope that you have learned some handy tips and tricks on how to use this device. And now you can be a better factory manager for your little chloroplast.